Tonight I'll be reviewing my custom made Ash Williams action figure. The anti-hero of my favorite horror trilogy. And I chose to break him out of my storage tote in honor of season 3 of Ash vs. the Evil Dead series on Stars. It's a great, great series. Uh, you just gotta watch it. The quality is really good. Uh, special effects, uh, set design, action. It's, a, it's just a really good series. You gotta check it out if you're an Evil Dead fan. Now most of this figure has been left since I made it in 1998. The reason I made this custom toy is because there was no Ash action figure at the time in 1998. The first time you would see an Ash figure was the year 2000 and up. I believe it was the third wave of the McFarlane movie Maniacs. First I'll go over the main body of the action figure. This is from the Xena action figure line from Toy Biz. And this is actually Bruce Campbell, his character in the uh, Xena series. Now, I hope I'm not the only one out there that did this before there was an actual official Ash figure. So, the concept was there. It already was Bruce Campbell, but it was a, a Xena figure. And I just transformed them into an Evil Dead series, Bruce Campbell. His character in that series was like a Robin Hood type, like a thief, and he was kind of slapsticky and everything. Just like the horror movie Sam Raimi did with uh, Bruce Campbell. The Evil Dead trilogy was very slapstick comedy, so it made a lot of sense there to him play the same kind of character. Bruce Campbell in general has that 90s kind of male vibe that like Al Bundy had or Tim Allen or Robin Williams. You know, like a sarcastic, funny, uh, anti-hero type. Let me go over the Xena figure parts of this that you might still see. Now his clothing was actually green. He had a mustache. But in the 90s, I think I used sandpaper and just sanded it off, you can kind of see. And that figure also had, which seems kind of cool now, is that Xena was set in like, you know, like a medieval times. And so was Army of Darkness. So that plays well with this, believe it or not. The only thing I wish I would have done was save the original cape that this figure had from the Xena toy line. I don't know where that went to. I don't know why I didn't keep it. Now this cape I added way after the fact when I made this in 1998. This is actually a Cobra Commander cape that I uh, just super glued on him lightly at a, like an angle. So you can tuck it under his, his uh, chainsaw. But if you look close, you can see the Cobra insignia on the, uh, on the buttons there. The only other thing I added to this figure after I made this in 1998 was this shotgun here from the Hunk. This is Hunk, and that's from the Resident Evil toy line series. So I just use this shotgun, and it fits in there. It fits in there pretty good. So the shotgun and the cape are the only two post-2000 stuff that I added to it. Now let's go over the true custom figure I made. This is the chainsaw from Movie Maniacs uh, McFarlane Toys Wave 1 and this is Leatherface's chainsaw. You can tell it's huge and it's not painted red like ashes but I, I just left it normal because I wanted to do as less as possible to restore this figure. I wanted to make it just like I did in 1998. You can see the blood effect. I can't remember if I stained that myself or if that was from McFarlane Toys. But I remember that was like a big controversy back then with the blood on the toys from McFarlane. I originally used liquid nails to attach his chainsaw to his arm. I cut his arm off and 
that's how I attached it. And that's the only adhesive I had at that time. Now here's the face. I probably stayed up many nights watching Army of Darkness to match the scars there. It's probably basically at that time I probably used a Sharpie marker. And actually a red and black Sharpie marker. I probably That's probably what that is. For his pants, I painted them black, and then I painted them brown. I think this is all acrylic paint, and I just wiped it to weather them a little bit. You can see that the pants are clearly, you know, of the Xena series. He almost looks like, he almost looks like a pirate. And his cod piece, they all look like uh, yeah, medieval pirates. So it fits. Once again, it fits into Army of Darkness. For his upper part, I used this, I painted it. It looks like I painted it blue first. And then I just painted brown and black just randomly around it to give it a more weathered look. And I think he had shoulder pads too. That came out far and I, I sanded them down. I put the blood around his collar and it's in there too, like the blood stain. I mean, it looks just like him, and believe it or not, a much more suave, like GQ looking Bruce Campbell in a very happier mood, but it looks like him. I did a review on Halloween decorations this year. And these three are from the pumpkin carving kit I did. But they're awesome stand-ins for like making a stop motion with Ash and Army of Darkness. You know, like if you wanted to recreate the graveyard scene and stuff like that. But they had a lot of miniature skeleton stop motion puppets. And just like uh, the movie Jason and the Argonauts where, you know, Sam Raimi was influenced by that movie. Then shortly after, Skeleton Warriors came out, which I think were going off the fumes of Army of Darkness. But pretty cool, right? I mean, they're almost the same scale of this action figure. Thank you for watching this toy review, and have a good night. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Oh.